Hello and welcome to this repair tutorial and today we're going to look at an Arcam Alpha 8R. So specifications, audio output is 50 watts per channel into 8 ohms and frequency response 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz and total harmonic distortion comes in at 0.01% and then for input sensitivity it does have a switchable MMO input so this would be your moving magnet for phone and connection directly to a turntable and that's coming in at 3 millivolts and then all of the other line connections are fairly high on this amplifier and it goes up to a maximum of 275 millivolts and then you also have a pre-amplifier output as well so that's giving you half a volt and then uh, impedance would be 4 then to uh, 16 ohms and then dimensions 85 millimeters height by 430 width and depth 330 and overall weight kilograms 4.5 and although the picture is showing the 8 series it's effectively the same amplifier it's just a sometimes they add the 8R on there just to inform the user that it had a remote control function and that operated the volume control and the mute uh, but no other functions all input selection is manually operated so what was the issue with this amplifier well when it came into the workshop the first thing once the top cover was removed you could see that the input protection fuse was missing so clearly at some point in time the fuse had blown and the rating of that fuse which is FS201 is an anti-surge fuse and its rating is 1.25 amps and on previous tutorials covering the Arcam series on the board you'll see that there is a plastic clip and then you can put into there a spare fuse in this case both the spare fuse and the main fuse is missing so a simple matter then installing the two and then the next thing really in terms of fault finding was to run the amplifier up just via the dim bulb test amp and immediately it lit very very brightly and this tends to tell you that there is a short circuit or a component which is drawing excess current so the next part of the test is just to depower the amplifier and then just use the checks then with the multimeter the obvious choice is to check the output MOSFETs and that's straightforward because you just release the two fixing screws at the back of the amplifier where you have like a metal plate which clamps to the left and right channel MOSFETs once that's removed you can get access to the three pins of the device and then put your meter on resistance and quick check and no issue found so there was no short circuits between any of the leads of the MOSFETs all good and then the next thing then to check was what's actually happening on the power input stage is there an issue with the toroidal transformer and it is not uncommon that you can have these amplifiers come into the workshop with short circuit on the primary coil side or is there another issue on the secondary side of the amp so first thing to do here was when you look at the main board you have like uh, spring clips so just insert a flat blade screwdriver into there probably about well, uh, four or five millimeters across would be sufficient just put it into the slot so then as you press down you're able to just pull off the secondary windings then so those secondary wirings once removed you can then power up the amplifier again and all i'm simply doing here is to verify is the excess current draw still present and if it is is it due to shorter turns on the primary of the transformer so when i made the test dim bulb didn't bright didn't light brightly so no issue with the transformer and then the next thing i'm going to do then is after depowering the amplifier i'll just do a series of resistance checks so i know that anything on the primary side so for example any of the filter capacitors which are connected across the euro socket mains input there's no issue there and i know that all the way through to uh, what would be the primary side is all good so what i'm concentrating now is on the secondary side and the first thing that i want to check are the shotsky diodes so those diodes are referenced d203 you have d204 d201 and d202 and these are fast rectifier diodes although the diodes that are shown in the schematic indicate that they're 5403 but the board and the components that were actually fitted were 5404 so just slight change in specification but nothing to uh, to be considered as such so simple matter then just drop your meter onto resistance and remember if you're testing a Schottky diode it's not going to have the same turn on voltage of 0.6 as a conventional silicon diode so typically there you'll be measuring about 0.3 to about 0.4 of a volt uh, for forward bias so as I'm going through I'm then checking them I'll then 
do a resistance check on D202, which is part of the negative uh, half cycle rectifier, and it was short circuit. So straight away you understand you know what the issue there is, and just a simple matter of just fitting a new UF5404 and then reconnecting the secondary to the board and then powering up the amplifier via the dimball tester and there was no issue seen everything all powered up correctly now rather than just you know check the bias and just do a small alignment as you've seen in other tutorials there is additional work that needs to be done to add what I always say longevity back into the repair so for all of the RCAM series the 8R7 etc it's just a systematic approach as I always say so what I do here is I just simply remove the fixing screws to hold the back plate directly to the main chassis and then I remove the five fixing screws on the main board I remove the fixing screws either side then for the fascia so I can remove them the fixing bolt uh, for the, the toroidal transformer and then just on the cage at the front fascia there's two other fixing screws and then you can just use a pair of flat blade flat nose uh, pliers just squeeze in the support pillar and then I can lift off the main amp board and once that's done you can see this in the video I can just turn it over and then the next thing that I want to concentrate on are all of the dry solder joints and there will always be dry solder joints so I just work from left to right from the rear of the amplifier so I'll solder all of the RCA connectors I'll solder the speaker terminals the MOSFETs as well because it's not uncommon that you get dry joints on there and then I also look at the Euro input socket sometimes you find dry joints and maybe a little bit of arcing around the pins and then the um, headphone socket make sure you solder that always cracks that you will see and then I then resolder the balance control treble and then bass and then also the selection switches for example tape um, speaker set 2 and the direct mode switch and then I focus on the input selection switch and you can see in the video again where the input selection switch is simply removed and then what I'll then do is I just take it apart and I can then clean it with a fiberglass pencil and then just put some uh, deoxid lubricant on there and once I've reassembled it that will be good for very you know a, a, a number of years um, but that oxidization all those broken solder joints that can form around the pins of the input selection switch lead to the issue which is very common which is the intermittent loss of sound and sometimes it can be restored if you switch between different inputs now as a matter of course I always replace the speaker protection relay just because the amplifier has been in operation for an extensive period of time it's prudent just to replace it again that gives you the longevity back into the amp and then the only well, the final thing to do then is just to do um, the cleaning of the potentiometers so we just use deoxid spray spray into there leave it maybe for a minute minute and a half and then just rotate the controls backwards and forwards multiple times just to ensure they're nose free and clean also the same for the headphone socket just spray into the socket and then insert multiple times the headphones jack and then also the um, manual switches as well just remember with the 8R and the 8 series you have the selectable phono input uh, versus a line input so just remember to put some deoxid into that external switch and just uh, operate it multiple times just to give it a clean and then the final thing for this amplifier shown in the video the bias was quite high on both of the output channels uh, over three three volts oh, sorry over three millivolts which uh, you know is incorrect so that means that the MOSFETs were actually driving harder than what they needed to so with the base control and volume so base control treble and balance control at midpoint and your volume control at, mid, at minimum with no speakers connected you then just connect across the 0.22 ohm um, emitter or, or the shunt resi or current resistors at the back and then what I'm then doing is I'm just simply biasing the preset then until I get approximately 2.2 millivolts that flows through the resistor and once that is done I then repeat the same step then for the next channel and uh, I'll just leave it on test for about an hour just wait for complete stability on the amp and then what I'll do is just some final adjustment then and once that's done simple matter of just cleaning the amplifier externally um, for this amp you know it was in reasonable condition I would say and then the only other thing was one of the rubber feet just on the front right hand side was missing 
and I hold all those sorts of things in stock anyway so once that was uh, replaced you know the amplifier was really as good as new and could then be returned back to the customer then. So that really brings us to the end of this repair tutorial not complicated uh, but again providing some insight on if you had an amplifier like an 8R or 8 or 7 series with the power input fuse missing or blown uh, the typical things that you need to check and uh, sort of common faults. So I thank you very much for stopping by and I appreciate uh, you just taking the time and uh, look forward then to uh, to the next one. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye-bye.